Okay, this is section 3-4 again, and now we're going to start to use the Excel sheet. And uh, the very first problem with the number of outfits, we'll have to do that problem by hand. But as soon as we get to factorial, this problem right here with how many ways could you rank 10 people from highest to lowest, which it turns out to be 10 factorial, we can use the Excel sheet. Now to open up the Excel sheet, you need to go to your Blackboard site. And on the Blackboard site, uh, there will be a button that says Excel sheet, and it's called ESP3. You click on that, and it opens. And remember to open that before you take any quiz or test. Now, once you have the Excel sheet open, it opens to it. You will get a question that says, "Do you want to enable macros?" And you need to say yes to that. This is just a picture of the question that you get, and you'll need to say yes or enable uh, enable macros. If you don't get that question, then you need to uh, go through this process here to make sure that you're you are uh, setting your uh, security to medium so that the macros can be enabled. Anyway, you get to the different sheets by just clicking on the buttons down here. For example, the factorial and all that type of thing, permutations, combinations in Chapter 4 is uh, right here on this next sheet that says binomial. So you just click on it. To move within this sheet, you just use these arrow buttons to move to the left and move to the right. To move up and down, you move these. Uh, you just can arrow up and down right here. And we see that in this area right down here is a place for you to do factorial combinations and permutations right here. You can click on any, type in any of the white cells, and uh, your, uh, the other color cells are not allowed to be clicked on. If you click on this, for example, it will uh, not allow you to do anything on it. Uh, since it's protected. So you can type in your values and your answer is given uh, where it says the answer is. So let's g answer this problem. What is 10 factorial? So all I do is click in this area where it says factorial, type in 10, hit enter, and I get the answer of 3,628,800. So that would be the answer to that problem. The next problem that we had, let me minimize this so I can see this in my text at the same time. So I'll shrink this down here a little bit. And let me scroll down so that I can get to the area of the Excel sheet that I'm looking for, which is this area here on factorial combinations and permutations. And we already did this problem, and we have that answer. So let's go on to the uh, factorial problems. And we did a problem about how many different ways can you select a vice president, president, and treasurer from a group of seven people. So we're choosing three people from seven people where order mattered and that's a permutation. So it's a permutation of seven things taken three at a time. Seven things taken three at a time permutation. So let me go to the Excel sheet then. And we'll put in on the Excel sheet right here, we'll put in seven. And right here, three. And we get our 210, which we had answered right here. The next question said, how many ways can you select three people from a group of seven people? No order specified. Since no order was specified, order didn't matter. So it would just be a combination of seven people taken three at a time. And we just put in the seven and the three right here. And we get our answer of 35, just like we had right here. Next question says, a deli offers six different toppings. How many different choices of toppings are there? Well, on this problem, it's a counting problem again. It's, it's six things taken two at a time. But does order matter or does order not matter? Well, if you go to a deli and say you want mustard and relish on your sandwich and they put on relish and mustard, uh, it's not a problem. Order doesn't matter. So if order doesn't matter, then it's a combination. So we'll need to do the combination of six things taken two at a time and we get 15. So there are 15 different possibilities. You could even list them if you wanted to. Um, how many uh, handshakes are required for a group of seven people to shake everyone's hand? Well, if I shake your hand, there's no difference between me shaking your hand and you shaking my hand. So order doesn't matter there. So again, we're taking seven people, uh, and we're taking two of them at a time, because two people shaking hands at a time. And since order doesn't matter, it's seven for the end. And again, order doesn't matter because when you are talking about this particular problem, shaking hands, when uh, person A shakes person B's hand, that's no different than B shaking person A hand. So order doesn't matter. And the answer to that problem would be 21. Let's see if we have any more problems like this. And you can actually see these are not real tough problems. But um, it's just a matter of knowing whether they're 
uh, permutations or combinations and then putting in the values here. And um, that's really all there is to the, the counting technique type of problems. So uh, that will do it with that section.